All right. So Wes, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about Potato Dreams of America. I feel like seriously, I know it was a dark comedy of sorts, but I feel like this is a very important film because it's actually based on your life. And as someone who's an LGBTQ filmmaker, I think that's really important. Thank you so much. Yeah, that means a lot to me to hear. And yeah, I appreciate it. So one of the things I absolutely loved was the fact that you had the Russian scenes where they're all speaking American, including your, your, the young you and your mom. I thought that was an ingenious move because once the American side hits, you got your character and your mom speaking the Russian accents. How, how did you come up with that? That's so ingenious. Oh, thank you. That was really important to me because I, uh, you know, I remember coming over to the United States and the language barrier is such an intense thing in your life. You, you, it's like you suddenly are a different person uh, when you're not able to communicate um, in the same language. So um, it was important for me to contrast that with, um, you know, when they're in Russia, like language is not an issue at all. So I don't want, I didn't want it to be a distraction. I didn't want it to be uh, considered by the audience in any way because it's just not an issue. Um, versus you know when they come to the states i want it to be a really dramatic jolt for the audience to feel like okay now suddenly they're fish out of water kind of situation yeah i felt like in a way not just with your character but you know even your mom's character i felt like um it was more like the american mindset because once you once that scene where you guys had the American movies channel, you had your mind, it's like you're imagining yourself immersed in the American culture. And that's where I, that's where I picked up. Maybe that's where the language might've come from. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I gotta say kudos has to go out for you putting kickboxer on that one scene, because that is one of my all time favorite <laughs> movies. <laughs> I absolutely love that movie. <laughs> uh, me too. You know, Jean-Claude Van Damme, nobody's like him <laughs> from the 80s. He was <laughs> such a big star. I mean, in Russia, everywhere, I think, everywhere in the world. That's awesome. So in the Russian scene, you had Jonathan Bennett as Jesus Christ, which was absolutely hysterical. And then you had <laughs> you had a great legend, Leah Delaria, as your gr the grandmother. What was it like with them on the set? It was really wonderful with Leah, you know, I wrote the part hoping that she would take it. Of course, I had no way of knowing that she would. Um, so when I when we started going to pre-production and um, approached her team and she said yes, I was just so thrilled because um, I really imagined her in the role. Um, and she was really on board. She was wonderful to work with. You know, she really got what the role was. Um, Jonathan was really cool. He was with us only for two days, but he, as soon as he came on set, he, you know, became um, Hirsch, our young star, you know, his like best friend instantly <laughs> and created this amazing chemistry um, for them to have on screen. So I really appreciated that, um, you know, he got that that's what the film really needed is to feel like, you know, they're so tight because this Jesus is sort of extension of Potato's imagination in a way. So, um, yeah, they were both really wonderful and fun. And just just for the record, I just want to know, was Potato actually your childhood nickname? <laughs> it was, was one of many. <laughs> it was one of many. I had to pick one, and I thought Potato is funny because it's like, you know, Potato is all of Russian food. It's in vodka. It also is sort of a weird, like, kind of an ugly but resilient vegetable that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you know. true saves a lot of people from hunger around the world <laughs> and what's great is on the american side you had dan loria who everyone's gonna know from the wonder years playing your stepdad what was it like working with him on the on the film dan was so wonderful i mean talking about a pro you know he's been um, acting for decades and decades and so it's just you know all of our actors were amazing and professional but just you know he brought a new he took it to the next level where he could just you know um, and the fun part about Dan too is, you know, he's the kindest, sweetest man. He would bring cookies to set all the time for cast and crew. Um, he also has the best stories because he, um, I think something that people don't, a lot of people don't know is that he's been really committed to Broadway and theater in general. And he's a playwright and he's worked in theater with like every legend that you can imagine. 
So he has so many stories, you know, about like Peter Falk and Cary Grant and like Sinatra even. So it was just really, it was really fun to listen to his stories about all those icons of, you know, sort of older Hollywood. Yeah, and what really got to me was the one scene where Potato finally admits to his mother that he's gay. And her reaction, I feel like was really breathtaking. In a way, funny, but really breathtaking because I felt like, you know, for its time period, you know, everyone was still aware, you know, kind of kind of um, leery about whether to accept someone who is LGBTQ. But that one scene really got to me. I felt like, you know, I really I recently just experienced that a close family member came out to me and I I told him, you know, I'm here for you. Don't you know, I am I'm an ally. Like, you don't know this. I'm an ally. So I am more than happy to support you. And but just what the way she did it, saying, I am so glad that you are because if you had gotten a girl pregnant and you were young, you would have dropped. I was laughing, but I also was like, that was that's really true. And it's also a, a really important for that time period. Thank you. Yeah, I was I was really lucky. I realized that a lot of, you know, folks my age who came out that time did not have that experience. And my mom was just really awesome and very unlikely, you know, for Russian culture, which is so not that but she um for whatever reason she's always been really kind of kind and open-minded and not bigoted in any way so i was really lucky <laughs> yeah that, you know, that scene is very um you know all of the dialogue and stuff is like how i remember it so it was really surreal just to, to shoot it it felt very like surreal and meta to be on set and have the actors reenact that moment and this is why I feel this is an important film because we're actually getting a, the filmmaker's true story about this. You know, you didn't sugarcoat. It felt like you didn't sugarcoat anything. You just you just made your own story to a dark. I mean, you could have made this into a one man show in a way, but um, the way you did it here, I think it's. I feel like it's very important. I think this is a film that people need to see you know, from all walks of life to see oh, someone's you. story come to life because you've done with struggles both from uh, not only an LGBTQ standpoint, but someone who's dealt with the Soviet Union and towards the end and your struggles with over being over there and coming here and how you have to deal with everything here. I think this is a very important film that people need to check out. Thank you. I hope everybody listens to you. <laughs> <laughs> so when, one question I like to ask is how long did shooting take and did you face any challenges along the way during production? Yeah, the uh, yeah, the biggest challenge was to raise money because I, I've, uh, I've written the script uh, about eight years ago. So it's been, you know, it's been around, uh, but raising money for it was really challenging. And, you know, I would have people come on board and promise bigger budgets, bigger things, bigger stars, and it wouldn't work out. And um, midway through that process, I made a short called Low Potato, which really helped me make the feature because the short became really successful. Um, in the documentary circuit and one at South by Southwest. And so I was able to sort of leverage the short and tell people like, you know, help me make this into a feature, which I always intended to do. Um, so that was the biggest challenge in terms of how we shot. So we were really lucky. We shot uh, American half first uh, on locations in Seattle in 2019. And then, um, in the winter, we shot Russian scenes on this, like it was basically like an abandoned warehouse where we shot um, Russian scenes on this makeshift sets uh, that our amazing production designer, Kristen Bonnelly created. Um, and I think it took maybe four, you know, four, five weeks total. And the miracle was that like two weeks after we stopped shooting, Seattle shut down because, you know, we were like the epicenter of COVID. So we, we got it done just in time. And then, of course, you know, for editing and post-production, COVID was just fine because yeah. it actually forced me to like, forced me home. to be home and work on editing. Yeah, I had like no excuses, no distractions. Yeah, one scene I really liked was when your mom reads the idea about the mail order bride and it looked like a literal PSA is like we're watching a literal, <laughs> like commercial for it. And I think that's, an, that's another ingenious move. I feel like... You've done it all with this. Like you really brought something out with that. And I felt like I was watching a commercial. 
Thank you. <laughs> that could have been, that could have aired in maybe Russia or something. But that, is that how you remembered everything in terms of like when you came up? How'd you come up with that scene of all things? Because that was amazing. yeah. I I wanted all of the Russian scenes to feel very um, kind of whimsical. Like I like magical realism in films, especially when it deals with childhood, because I feel like when we're children. You know, everything feels kind of fantastical and bigger than life. And so I wanted to capture that childhood sort of sense of wonder and magic. And so it was important to me to have those scenes like having Jesus literally be my, like a literal character in the film, uh, like the male order bright color lock scene. The funny thing is that I'm, I'm a really passionate about like practical effects. And yeah. so we did a lot of these things practically, like the sets, you know, the sets would have different layers to them and things would happen in real life uh, instantly, you know, um, in the foreground and the background. Um, and we went out of our way to make it practical. But then when I watch it now, I'm like, nobody really knows. People could think it's green screen, <laughs> just kind of ironic. I think like, I was convinced it was practical, maybe because my film studies, I got to me, it's like, yo, this actually looks like it really was done. Like, oh, that's good. It didn't feel like, it didn't feel like <laughs> a, a CGI type thing. It felt like it was real. But uh, I got to say, the um, funny, the one part that really cracks me up is at, when you're watching, kick, when Potato's watching Kickboxer and starts to get his first feelings and he throws the rag at Jesus. I literally <laughs> like, I, I, I was literally like trying not to like laugh so loud that people could hear me around. <laughs> because, and just that reaction, I, I would have, I just was ready to lose. I think that's gotta be like the, one of the funniest scenes of the movie. And then you just, just all around, just the comic bits. And I, and there's that twist with your stepfather and that really was like, I want to say shocking, but at the same time, like, I kind of knew something was up with him because he, yeah, just the way he, he way, the way he put up his walls. I'm like, something's not right with him. There's something about him. And then finally, when the big reveal happens, I got admit I did my mouth did drop, but I was like, holy crap, it's really good. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's um, it was pretty surprising for us when it happened in real life too. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, cause I, that that's what that's what really makes it more important because this is something you actually experienced it and i like the fact that you get to see your the you know the side-by-side -side photos of the actors and then you know your mom and you know your stepdad in real life and i'm like wow that's just amazing and it's just like i think people really do need to see this this because this is a very important film and um i hope everyone gets to check this out and i think it's coming out next week on the 21st so um yeah it's, so it's out, we're out on DVD already and VOD and then uh, Vinegar Syndrome Special Edition Blu-ray. I think it's, it's on pre-order right now, but I believe it's actually shipping out at the end of the month. So I'm really excited because I'm such a Vinegar Syndrome mega fan. And I Me too. I collected I, them for a while. And <laughs> I, just picked up, I just picked up New York, I got New York Ninja a few months ago because I, nice. I love those type where films get lost and then somehow they come they somehow come back from the dead and vinegar syndrome did it did a great job on that title yeah they're just extraordinary what they do and like yeah such an honor to be you know affiliated with them in any way so finally what is next for you that you can talk about that you're working on well i just uh so the same distributor dark star that um has potato dreams of america they also picked up my series called capitol hill uh, which initially it like premiered at Huffington Post, um, but now they're gonna have it and hopefully release it on some streaming platform and stuff. And it's a, um, it's hard to describe. It's sort of a parody of 1970s American TV shows, uh, but with a lot of drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race and a lot of dark humor and sort of horror fantasy elements as well. Um, I kind of think of it as like an Adult Swim cartoon, but live action <laughs> so it's, that's the best way to describe it I, that's exactly <laughs> how i would describe it that's perfect that is so perfect that, um so i'm excited to see what they do with it and where they put it out um so it finds more audience but yeah once once i find out where it is i will let everyone know where to check it out because you know i like i i definitely think people i would i'm definitely gonna check it out for sure when it comes out <laughs> thank you so Potato Dreams of America is currently out on DVD. We've got Vinegar Syndrome's 
special edition coming out soon. And I got to tell you guys, if you really want to see an important autobiographical pick, this is a film to see. Sure, it may be a dark comedy, but you have some great performances from the cast and you have an amazing story about struggling and accepting who you are. And Wes, man, I can't thank you enough, not only for getting a chance to talk here, but to make such an important film about your life. And I hope people will resonate with once they see this film. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, I hope everyone takes care and stay safe. And you too. <laughs> hey, you too. All right. Great. Same here.